Hello everybody, uh, this is Mario Cazares here and today I have 7 things you may not have known in Ableton Live 9. Now uh, some of these things you might know but uh, I decided to go over them because these are things I didn't know at first and would have been really helpful if I had known them. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the very first thing I want to go over is the ever annoying pitch bend problem. And if you've been working in Ableton for long enough, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'll go ahead and show you anyway. So let's say you have the like MIDI notes, you have a MIDI pattern. And I'll go ahead and play this synth that I will be showing you as an example. So uh, this is the synth that we're going to use to pitch bend. So let's say I want to add a pitch bend at the end here. Well, I can just go ahead and click this E and it'll show up, pitch bend and I'll pitch this part down. But as we play it back, you'll see what the problem is in a little bit. You see what the problem is? Now that I've pitched it down, if I stop at this moment where it's pitched down, then if I go back and play it, it's going to be in the wrong key. And I have the original right here just so you know what it's really supposed to sound like. So you can see it's a major problem in Ableton and it's really frustrating. But there is actually a simple solution to this and we're just going to go ahead and zoom in to the very beginning of this note. Just make one, two, three and move this middle one up or down by just a tad. And then now if we play it back, it should be in correct key. There you go. Now it's in correct key and you have your pitch bend. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing in uh, this tutorial. And that is the fact that you can edit with an external editor. Now, I'm not going to be able to actually open the external editor because the one I'm using right now, uh, I'm using to actually record the sound. But uh, let me show you what I mean. So if we go ahead and go to Options, Preferences, we can go down to, I think it's a Look Feel or File Folder. There we go. Here in File Folder, um, if you go to where it says Sample Editor right here, you can see that it says Browse. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And what it allows you to do is choose a program to edit any audio with. So it could be an external program, it, it can be anything really. So my external audio system is Audition, which allows me to send audio from Ableton to Audition. It's pretty cool, huh? So that was a really awesome thing that I learned. And all you have to do is find the .exe or the executable file for it. Some people might use Audacity, some other or some other uh, audio editing thing but yeah there you go and the way that you access that with the audio file is you double click on the audio file and you click down here where it says edit and right here it tells us use this button to open the sample for editing in a sample editor application so there you go you just click this edit button and it'll open everything for you and you should be good now like I said I can't open it because I have audition open so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. Okay, so uh, here is a older trick that I knew a while back, and many of you probably already know this one, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over this anyway. But uh, in Ableton Live, you already know you can record instruments like so with MIDI, and uh, but uh, some people don't know that you can actually arm multiple tracks and uh, play multiple instruments at the same time. So what you do is you just hold control, click on record and on the arm button and you should be able to play both instruments at the same time. And this works with uh, three instruments as well or as many as you want actually. Let's go ahead and try it. So as you can see it's uh, that's a pretty cool feature. Um, I don't know how many times you would actually use it in production but it's just pretty cool to know. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to this next part, and that is freezing and flattening. 
Okay, so many of you probably already know this, but this is something I didn't know. I did know you can freeze tracks in Ableton, but I did not know you could flatten. And what that basically does is it flattens the whole track into an audio track and gets rid of all the uh, effects and all those things and just adds them straight into the file. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean. So right, now, right here we have a MIDI clip of a just piano playing some chords. All right. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a reverb on here real quick. All right. And then finally, we're going to freeze this track. So I uh, click freeze track. All right. So it's frozen. And this is showing us how far the reverb tail has gone. So I'll play it back again. All right. So now if I actually right click again, there's an option to flatten. So if you click this, it turns it into basically an audio file and it gets rid of all the MIDI information this is now an audio track and it's treated exactly like audio because that's what it is so now we have uh, everything frozen into one audio file including the reverb so that's just a handy tool instead of having to resample if you know where you go in here and resample all that stuff all right, so let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so we're moving on to the next tip. And uh, this tip is also, you might already know it, but some may not. And uh, this is how to get Bezier style curves. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, I have a filter and I'm just gonna slowly open the filter as we go along. So just hold on a bit. Okay. So as you can see, it's just a linear opening like so. But if you click in the middle of this while holding Alt, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Alt and then left click and you can actually create a curve so that you can exponentially stay low and then open the filter really quickly or open the filter right away and state well you get the idea you can create a bezier curve instead of having to put multiple points and doing all this stuff it's just a faster and easier way to work um, that one was kinda simple these last three I know but uh, some people may not know them so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing alright so we're gonna go ahead and move on to something that most people may not have known and uh, that's going to be a custom metronome. Now a lot of people don't know this but you can actually change the metronome in Ableton Live. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that's done. Uh, I render these two clips to be my metronome. Uh, keep in mind they do have to be short samples, they cannot be long samples. But uh, these are two samples I use. Alright, so I rendered them up to my desktop and we're gonna go ahead and find the folder where Ableton is. So I went to my C drive, program data, Ableton, Live 9 standard, program, or back, whoops, um, where is it? Resources, miscellaneous, metronome, and samples. And right here we have metronome.wave and metronome up. Now you do need to keep in mind that they need to be exactly the same names, so I'm going to go ahead and change mine in order to work. So we have this metronome and metronome up. So I'm gonna go ahead and back these up because I do not want to lose the original metronome. That would not be good. So I'm gonna call this metro and paste them in here. All right. Then I'm going to delete this information. Uh, try again because it's in, oh, because Ableton is open, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to go ahead and replace these files in the destination, continue, yes, try again, uh, okay, so I have to close Ableton apparently. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put these in here, replace files in destination, yes, okay, now we can run live as an administrator. Alright, so now if I turn on my metronome and play it, it should be those Squidward sounding things. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, 
I thought that was pretty cool at first. Okay, so we're going to move on to our final and the last tip. Okay guys, so we're here at our last tip and this last tip is going to be how to render stems. Now I know some people like to do uh, remixes or render out stems for remixes so I thought it'd be a good last thing to add. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to just select the range. Let's say this. I'm going to go ahead and click file, export audio and video, uh, take out all this previous stuff that I had, 32-bit. And uh, what you can actually do is change the rendered track right here. And uh, you can pick all tracks. And what this will do will render out every track individually. And uh, I think you can pick individual ones, but I'm not sure how. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with all tracks here. So I click all tracks, click OK, uh, choose a folder. So let's just make this on the desktop. Yes, we're on the desktop, and we'll call it uh, test. Click OK, save. And what it's going to do is render out all the stems in the song. And if I open that up, it might show us the stems being loaded. If I go down, what was it called? Test? There we go. So you can see all these stems being rendered, and they're named. Uh, keep in mind it does render out the rever the return tracks and all these other things too and groups so you'll have uh, multiples or duplicates of some items so let's say like this group right here which has all like the vocals in it well it will render each of those vocal tracks separately but then it'll also render the group entirely so you gotta watch out for that see so like right here it has the re return or the reverb track so uh, that's actually the end of this, um, can't say really, I guess it's a tutorial, but more of seven things that you may not have known. Um, if there's any other type of videos or any questions or anything like that, go ahead and comment. And if you don't want to comment, then don't. you don't have to. And uh, thank you and goodbye.